is voluntarism? So this question has been answered by a lot of people uh, in a lot of different ways, and I am going to give a casual fun explanation today. Uh, there are a lot of intricate details that we often enjoy arguing with each other about, of course, arguing in a fun way to, to develop our understanding of a thing. Um, however, today we're just going to keep it casual, and I'm going to talk about a few of the, the ways that things have normally been under governments, and then how a voluntarist believes things might be better. This doesn't speak for all voluntarists. Uh, the only basic part of voluntarism is all human interactions should be voluntary. That's essentially what a voluntarist believes. Everything else that I'm going to talk about is kind of expounding on that from my personal perspective. And not everyone will agree, and that's okay. Um, I could be wrong. There are some additions to this. There are some things that, that uh, you know, I, I've added. There's some things I've left out. But here goes, and hopefully this gives you a good idea of this uh, humanitarian philosophy called voluntarism. So one of the first premises is that we own ourselves, this self-ownership premise. The idea is that I own my body and I should be able to make all of the choices about what happens to my body and what I do with my body. The government should not be able to tell me that I need to get a tattoo or have my hair cut a certain way or take a certain shot or do anything like that. It's my body and it's my choice. And if I want to use my body to go out and be a, a firewood cutter, I can do that. And part of the extension of self-ownership is that I not only own my body, myself, but I own the results of what it is that I produce. And when I say I own it, <laughs> like sometimes you have to own your mistakes. If you make mistakes, you own those as well. So if I decide to make the mistake of going out in a rainstorm without wearing proper protective clothing, then I'm probably going to get wet. And that isn't anyone else's problem. That is my problem. I own myself. I, I am responsible for myself. Here's a big one that most voluntarists agree about and say is one of the foundational premises, and that is the non-aggression principle, NAP. The idea is that human beings ought not to aggress against other people. And anti-subjectivism, which is a related philosophy, kind of breaks it down and says, hey, there are a bunch of us human critters out here in nature, and we exist alongside bears and rocks and, and all kinds of other natural things. And that is the state of nature. And then if some of us humans want to kind of get together and say, hey, um, how about we make this mutual agreement that I won't punch you if you won't punch me, and I won't steal your stuff if you don't steal my stuff. And we make this kind of general agreement, and it is, you know, it can be written or it can just be verbal or assumed. You kind of, you see somebody on the street and you just kind of assume, okay, they're probably not going to punch me and I'm probably you know, not going to punch them. There's real no, really no reason to do this. And so we have this kind of this reciprocal agreement not to do bad things to each other. Well, the non-aggression principle is part of that. The idea is I won't initiate violence. Now that doesn't mean that I won't use violence. Um, aggression, the non-aggression, aggression is different than violence. The initiation of violence is not something that I am interested in doing. However, if someone else initiates violence against me, it is perfectly acceptable for a voluntarist to then respond with even greater violence to end that threat. So we're not these uh, peacenik kind of um, pacifists. Um, we want to be very gentle and kind and peaceful, and we don't want anybody to start any junk. But if somebody does, then we will respond in turn to stop that from happening. As voluntarists, we respect private property. And so under a government system, the government is in control of all of the property, and they might let people say that they own portions of it, but they don't really. The government taxes people. In other words, they steal some money from them in order for the people to be able to continue owning a piece of real property or a motor vehicle or something like that. In a voluntarist society, the idea would be that if you own something, you own it. That is your property. You get to decide what happens with it, how you use it, et cetera. Now, you can't violate the other principles like the non-aggression principle that we just talked about. So, for example, somebody could argue, well, 
under a voluntary society, if somebody had a baseball bat, um, that is their property. Shouldn't they, according to you, be able to do whatever they want with it, including walk up to a little kid and bash them on the head with it? Well, no, that would be violating another principle, which is the non-aggression principle, which we discussed. So as long as you're not violating any of the other principles, then yes, that is your baseball bat, your real property, your vehicle. You get to use it as you choose. And you don't owe anyone anything because you happen to own that property or use that property. And as a voluntarist, we respect others' property. So part of that is not dumping trash on the neighbor's lawn or on a shared river or those kinds of things. We respect the property of others and we expect them to respect our property. As voluntarists, we believe in voluntary exchanges of, of whatever kind we want. So if I want to exchange a uh, an afternoon of stacking firewood for someone who is a massage therapist and in exchange, they are going to give me a massage that is perfectly acceptable as a voluntarist, we are able to do that. Whereas in a government uh, situation, there's probably some licensing board about massage therapy that that person would have had to go have gone to a particular kind of school and passed certain tests. And then when they, when we make this exchange, we should set a dollar value as to what it was worth. And then we would each need to pay uh, the government a portion of that because we exchange something of value and the government should be able to tax that. That's that's what people who believe in the state think should happen. In a voluntary society, we would be able to exchange with each other voluntarily. As long as everything is consensual, we can make that exchange. We can trade what we want. We can have kind of any kind of interaction we want as long as we're not violating the other principles. A continuation of that is freedom of association. We get to hang out with who we want to hang out with. We get to have whatever kind of relationships we want. If some folks are gay, great. If they're heterosexual, great. If they are black and white and brown and green and they all want to hang out together, great. We, they can do that. Anybody gets to choose who it is that they hang out with, who they have these voluntary exchanges with. There is nobody saying it isn't acceptable for you to hire that person to do that job because you have to pay them a certain amount of money, a minimum um, amount of money to do this thing. No, as long as it's a voluntary consensual agreement between two parties and they're both walking away thinking, hey, I'm glad I did this. This is a good or, you know, it's a good exchange then you can associate with whomever you want, however you want. Most voluntarists believe in spontaneous order. We believe that it isn't necessary to have a big, strong central planning uh, organization or multiple organizations or people who decide what each person should do and what each town or county or state or whatever should do. That's, that's kind of the standard way things go. Are there these central planners? That isn't the best way for human beings to interact with each other. As voluntarists, we believe that if the three of us all come together at an intersection in our vehicles, none of us want to crash our cars, so we'll make little head nods or grins or smiles or whatever, and the other person will kind of communicate, there will be spontaneous order, and we will get through the intersection without a crash. And it's interesting to look at the United States where there are so many traffic lights and signs and signals and law enforcement, and then looking at other places like Budapest, where is, is it Budapest where there are something like 11 traffic lights in the whole city, but nobody really wants to get in crashes with each other. So they generally don't, even when there are no uh, intersections that are controlled with uh, electronics lights um, or even stop signs. People just know, hey, I'm coming up on an intersection. People are going to be flying through. Let's all slow down and work our way through here. That goes for general things in society, not just traffic, but in how we make all the decisions as individuals in life. This spontaneous order just happens to come about. In the absence of government, it still works. A good example of this is an anarchist um, children's story. And maybe it wasn't just for children, but it was called Little House on the Prairie. And if you look at the television show or the books, it was an anarchist series. And the family, the, the Wilders, they were anarchists. If you look at 
how those societies work, there wasn't a sheriff in there. There wasn't any government. People just kind of worked things out. Now, I know I'm re referencing a fictional television show and book um, is an example. And, and obviously there were, were problems that probably popped up uh, in that uh, environment. Uh, I'm sure there were, there will always be problems among human beings. There will never be this utopia that people who believe in government think can exist. If you have government, there's going to be this utopian society. The voluntarist doesn't believe that. The voluntarist believes we don't need a central planner. Spontaneous order will happen. We'll figure things out. If we're having a problem, maybe the number of us will get together and pool our resources and hire a solution. But we will work things out and we don't need an, uh, somebody else to do the planning, which is another big part is this decentralization. Uh, the voluntarist believes that there should not be a central planner, a central controller, a president, a World Economic Forum, United Nations, World Health Organization. If there are entities who are big, well, that's great. The entity is certainly, there's no problem with large organizations existing. It's just that none of them should be given the power or the permission to make plans and run the lives of all the other people. They, those organizations are more than welcome to offer advice and say, hey, we've done a lot of research. We've looked over things. We think that everyone ought to wear green baseball caps. Well, they're welcome to say that. And as individuals, we're welcome to agree to do that. And we're also welcome to say, no, I don't think we're going to do that. And that should be just fine. So it's that decentralized nature. If we're going to make some decisions as a, uh, a group of neighbors on a road, we all get together. We voluntarily make decisions. If someone doesn't want to agree to it, eh, oh, well, they don't have to. That's how things should be done on an individual level or at most on a little bit larger voluntary level. A concern that many people have with voluntarism is that defense, the, the uh, security, the ability for a person to protect their property and their family and themselves, their neighborhood, their larger, their country, that that would not be possible with voluntarism. So the government's solution is to have many armies, many tanks and bombs, and then the centrally planned protectors will go out and keep everybody safe. Historically, this has not worked, but some people still hold the opinion that that's a good idea. The voluntarist says, yes, there will certainly be some bad people who will do some bad things, and we don't like that. We don't want people to break into our house while we're trying to, to sleep, and we don't want people breaking in and stealing our stuff. So we are going to either take personal responsibility for that and defend ourselves, or if we want to get some sleep, we are certainly more than welcome to get together with some neighbors and say, hey, Let's hire the big Irishman with the big stick, who's a gentle, kind guy and honest and trustworthy. Let's all chip in and hire him to walk nightly patrols and uh, yeah, kind of watch out for bad guys who are trying to break in. We are certainly welcome to do that. And where that would become a problem is that if somebody came to me and said, hey, uh, you need to pay me some money so that I can pass that on to the big Irishman who's going to protect us. Well, that's not okay to tell me that I have to pay money. That's not a voluntary and consensual exchange. What would be appropriate would be to say, hey, we're hiring this guy, a, a group of us neighbors, and if we all chip in 100 bucks a month, we'll be able to have this person do these patrols on, uh, at a certain um, amount of times per night. And then if I say no, well, that is going to drive up the price for other people. And that's that's a challenge. They need to take that into consideration that not everybody is going to say yes. Just as any business person would say, um, not every single person is going to stop at my restaurant and have a meal or three meals a day at my restaurant. So you just have to do some calculations and yeah, divide it up. Everybody has a share. Now, I certainly wouldn't deserve any of that watchman's protection. If I'm not paying for it, I have no right for what other people have hired to be done. So that would be the, the way that defense would be hired or protection. That's the way it would be handled in a voluntarist society, both on a small scale in the neighborhood and then on a huge scale. If there, if, if there was a big land mass 
I live in the the uh, area, the landmass controlled by the United States government right now. And if that landmass, if many of us living here were concerned that the people of another landmass, let's say Canada, was going to come and invade us, and all of those people were going to come down for some reason and invade our area, then it would certainly be appropriate for all of us to get together and say, hey, um, if we see them coming down across the border, let's go grab our guns and stop them, warn them and stop them, get off of our individual property. Now, we would not have a right to tell them that they couldn't cross some arbitrary line uh, in a voluntary society. There wouldn't be that imaginary line between Canada and the United States or between the United States and Mexico. Every bit of property would be privately owned, and it would be up to those property owners to decide who could and who couldn't come onto their land. Some property owners would say, I don't mind if Can Canadians come here, and others would say, I don't want Canadians on my property. And some people would probably say, I don't like uh, green people or black people or white people, and they may not come into my restaurant. That is that voluntary association that we talked about earlier. That would certainly be a choice that any person could make. And I happen to kind of like the idea of not being a racist. So if a restaurant said that they weren't going to serve black people, I don't think I would want to go to that restaurant or be around the kind of people who would who would act that kind of nasty way. So I wouldn't use that restaurant. And I have a feeling you might not either. And if you did, that's fine. We can each associate with who we want to. But I went off on a little segue, returning to something we talked about earlier. Um, the long and short of it of, of defense is everything has to be voluntary, thus the term voluntarist. Free markets. Free markets are a huge part of voluntarism. Almost all voluntarists are free market capitalists. And what does free market capitalism mean? This means that the means of production and all property is privately owned, and that's a good and acceptable thing. It doesn't mean that some companies are going to get together with some governments and make these crony deals. That's called crony capitalism. That isn't free market capitalism. Free markets are you get to start a business or exchange a good for money or whatever other remuneration you guys decide upon, you get to do that and nobody should have anything to say about it. There shouldn't be a price limit on the top end or the bottom end. There shouldn't be any regulation of how you do the business. If, if you are a hair cutter and there's a some group of people calling themselves a state board of beauticians, and they say that, that all hair should be cut between one inch and one and a quarter inches long and anything else is not okay, that would not exist in a free market economy. In a free market economy, you cut hair however you want. And if somebody doesn't like the way you cut it, they can talk to you and say, hey, I noticed you cut it not quite short enough. And then you have an option of saying, well, you didn't explain it well enough to me. So that's how it is today. You need to pay me as we agreed upon. In the future, give me better instructions or in the future, I'll cut it shorter. Or if the person is intelligent and has good customer service and wants to keep that person as a customer, they'll say, oh yeah, absolutely. Let me trim this a little bit more. That's how things would work in a free market society. And finally, in our free market voluntary society, the big kind of ending thing here that the overarching thing is individual responsibility. We are all responsible for ourselves. If you want someone else to tell you what to do, you are responsible for finding that person to tell you what to do. If you don't want to be able to just go marry the person of your choosing, then you can certainly go to somebody, maybe a, a person who is formerly a county clerk, and say, hey, I would like to come to you and ask for permission to marry somebody. That would be absolutely acceptable. I don't think anyone would do that. But in the current environment, we can't do that because, well, the government just needs to make sure it's okay before you get a, a wedding license, before you get permission to marry someone else. There are all of these, these examples that are just so sad and frustrating, and yet so many people are used to them and say, well, it's kind of the price you pay to live in a civilized society. The voluntarist says, no, we need to be individually responsible for our actions. And as I mentioned earlier, 
for the outcomes of those actions. If one person wants to work 100 hours a week and is really smart and really fortunate, really lucky, uh, is at the right place at the right time, places themselves so that they find the right opportunities and they end up having hundreds of billions of dollars, great. That they accept personal responsibility for having created that wealth. If someone else chooses not to do that, they choose to work half time, like let's say 40 hours a week. That's all they want to work. And it's their choice. They are allowed to be lazy and only work 40 hours a week. That is okay. However, the results of that, that's the responsibility of that person. That is an individual responsibility thing. So that person will probably not be very, very wealthy. Now, whether the wealthy person or the poor person doesn't get what they want out of life, that isn't someone else's problem. That is an individual responsibility thing. And it is not the debt of the poor person who has great relationships, the person who is financially poor, to provide friends to the billionaire who has a lot of money but no friends. And it isn't the billionaire's responsibility to provide money to the poor person who has a lot of friends but no money. No, you each get what you can make happen in a voluntary way. That's just a brief overview of some of the key points of voluntarism that I think most voluntarists would agree with. If you're a voluntarist and you disagree with what I'm saying, please do write in the comments below and uh, put some corrections in there. And if you would like to also add some things that I left out that are important, there are probably 50 or 100 other things that are generally agreed upon by most voluntarists. Um, please feel welcome to mention those, but hopefully this gave those of you who were unfamiliar with voluntarism, hopefully this gave you a little overview, a little glimpse into what this philosophy is about. <laughs>